Hello friends, welcome to my studio, welcome to my channel. If you're members of the channel, I want to thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. You have no idea how much I do. If you're not a member of the channel, perhaps you'll think about it. Now, this little tutorial, uh, I'm doing this tutorial because as I have worked with metal foil in several projects, some of you have said, well, where do I get this elusive metal foil? And, uh, you know, to tell you the truth, I'm working on these gigantic rolls I bought 20 years ago from Jones Tones. So it just honestly never occurred to me that it would be difficult to find. Evidently, I was wrong. Now, Lisa Pavelka does sell some of these foils. One of you commented in our members classroom that she does still have them, but they're quite expensive. Michaels also sells a brand of these, but evidently all the stores don't carry them. So they're less expensive, <laughs> but you can't find them. Yeah. Mm hmm Yep. So, um, anyway, uh, several years ago, and you know something, I've done so many things in the last few years, I completely forgot about this, but you know, I decided to explore metal foils. Uh, actually, I, I decided to try nail foils. These are heat, uh, heat transfer foils that they sell for nails, nail art. And they looked so familiar to me like this. It's like, oh, I think I had a big roll of this. And oh, I think I had this. And they're so familiar to me, I thought, you know, it looks like the same thing. Let me give it a try and see if it is. Well, you know, I've had some mixed results with it, but I'm going to share that with you because these things are very easy to find and they're very cheap. Now you have to go to a place like Wish or Timu, someplace like that. Um, you probably can get them on Amazon, but I have the feeling, the sneaking suspicion, they come from the same place. So, um, Anyway, there you go. Now let's talk about the cons first. No, no, we're gonna talk about the pros. Let's start with the good stuff. Okay, the good thing, first of all, is that you have so many options in colors and holographic stuff. And, you know, I mean, it's just like the wide and wild world of nail art foils all out there for you. So what's an advantage? Well, they're all this wide. If you need a gigantic sheet, let's say you're making a box or something, well, you're just going to have to piece it from these strips because for nail art, I guess they figure you don't need big squares. This is a much more useful shape. Okay. So that is the con. For me, that is probably in terms of usage, the the con. But there's another con. <laughs> maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe this one's more. Mm, maybe this is a bigger con. See this beautiful gold? Ooh, pity, pity. This is what happens after it bakes. This is that same gold. And while I didn't lose the holographic pattern, I certainly lost the gold, didn't I? So this is one way that I think these differ from the Jones tones. Jones tones, th this did, that didn't happen. If you had gold and you transferred gold and you put the gold in the oven, you got gold back. This time I started with gold, I transferred gold and I got silver back. So the silver, I mean, the gold seems to be mm, a little less stable, I would say a lot less stable than the Jones tones. So you have to be aware that that may happen. Now, from my experience, from my limited, albeit limited experience, I have found that the gold is really the only one that does that so far. Here is this guy. See this guy? Same. Here is this guy. Same. Red. Didn't really change very much. Maybe it got a little warmer, but uh, you know, I didn't go from what red to blue. <laughs> um, it maintained and held the red. Magenta, 
magenta, yay! But if you look closely, this magenta does have a holographic pattern that is not really seen in the transferred piece. Now, part of that might be because this piece of clay happens to be lumpy. It was scrap clay. I rolled it through the pasta machine. I rolled and rolled and rolled. You know what? I didn't get all the bubbles out. And that's kind of why the surface of this whole piece of clay is kind of lumpy. Little air pockets in there. So it's not really fair to say that the holographic pattern will never be seen. It's just that when I did it, I don't see it. Now here is green. This is a flat green and it has held perfectly fine. So the only one so far, well, here is violet. The violet seems to have held too. Here is, where's the holographic blue? This is, mm, let me turn this in, right side out. Here is the holographic blue. And the holographic blue, the hologram is still there and the blue is still there. So, yay. Good on you, blue. All right. Now, one of the nicest things about it, too, I know I'm jumping from con to pro to con. Well, this is another pro for you. It's easier to transfer this stuff. Now, if you guys have watched me, you know that it's a bit stressful when I do it because I take it. Let's just use mm, this guy, okay? This guy. And I'm just going to cut a little piece off and we're just going to transfer it. Okay, now both sides are silver, but the dull silver side is the wrong side. This is the chemical coating side and this is the mylar side. So, when you transfer, you want the mylar side up. Okay, so let's give this a go. I'm going to leave some of it hanging off the edge because any little bit of help is really good for me. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to rub, 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 rub with my fingers. Like so. Now, you guys know that when I'm using the Jonestones, I grab the nearest credit card or Fire Mountain Gems pocket beater and I whip, 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 like that. Well, I've found that with these flatter colors, now I don't know if it's going to work here, like the green and the blue and even the violet, that I have to do that less because the coating itself seems to be a little more sensitive to the heat from my little finger. Okay, so I'm just going to rub. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to whip. Whip, whip, whip. I'm just going to rub with my fingers. Now, if I were Barb Harper, this is what she would do. She would go, whoosh, 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 and it would transfer. <laughs> it's like magic when she does it. For me, it's a little stressful. All right. Now let us do the old rip it off. Three, two, one, rip. See, look at that. Isn't that, that's kind of amazing to me. But that I think is testament to the heat sensitivity of these particular foils, all right? And um, and it's also the reason, because it's more heat sensitive, it's easier to transfer, but that's also probably the reason why this, when heated, turns into this. The gold is less stable, it is more heat sensitive, and therefore you lose it when you cure it. Okay, so let me think, is there anything else I have to tell you about this particular product? Hmm. I, I think that's really cool. Look at that. Woohoo. It is a beautiful effect. And this is when it's cured. Okay. It's not quite so, well, first of all, this is a little lumpy. So it's like a texture on the surface. This is very smooth. But look at it. It's just quite beautiful for some things. Cool. All right, so let me sweep this aside because we're going to make earrings.
I have a strip of black clay and I've rolled her through setting number five and I have a tile. I should probably look for a larger tile. Okay, so <laughs> I picked this up on my work table. Hello. Okay. So try to make the tile clean. Make sure the tile is clean. Make sure that you don't do what I did, which was pick up a little bit of lavender clay on the back. All right, I'm just gonna live with it though. So now I'm just flattening it. I'm gonna take my clean brass rod and roll. And you know what, that lavender area, I'm hoping I can make it totally flat. I'm going to do my best. Okay. Da -da. Here we go. So what I'm going to use is this same stuff. I love it so much. This. Remember? I just did it. So I'm going to do it again. You don't have to watch me because you've already seen it. So I'll be back when I transfer a piece of this onto this sheet of clay. Mm, how exciting. So here it is. And I have to say there was just one little spot that I had to go over because if you have spots that aren't like this one here, well you can find the corresponding spot on the paper, put it down and do a little rubbing and then lift it up and you'll have transferred the whole thing. But this is probably one of the most perfect transfers I've ever made in my entire life. Look at that, there's nothing left on the Mylar. Fabulous, love it. Now some of you are probably going, oh, Timu, oh my God, I can't believe that woman orders from Timu. Well, you guys, I live in the mountains. I live, you know how far my grocery store is? My grocery store is like 15 miles away. That's one five miles away. So the nearest craft store or store that could possibly get something like this would be 45 miles. <laughs> so I tend to do a lot of mail order. No. Timu, I know I had the same feeling like you don't want to give your information to anybody. So this is what I do. I only use PayPal. Now I know some of you don't like PayPal, but in my life and in my world, the fewer places my personal information appears, the better for me. <laughs> and so I got to trust somebody. So PayPal is my go-to buy things uh, because I know that my personal information, I don't give it to anybody. So that is what I do with Timu. I just use PayPal and uh, you know, I, I knock, knock on ceramic tiles. I have not had any difficulty. Anyway, so that's where these came from. Now we're gonna make earrings. Yep, we are. So I'm pushing that aside for the moment because I'm gonna talk about findings. You guys know if you've watched me at all, I don't like this finding. It is like not my favorite. Uh, I don't like it. I bought it because I thought eh, maybe I'll like it. You know what, I don't like it. I'm moving my camera closer. But never one to throw a good piece of stainless steel wire away. I use them for other purposes. Now on the site, you will notice that there is a class on how to make an, uh, an earring, I mean, a pin back using these. Because I think they make better pin backs than earrings. But uh, in this class, we're going to use these that I really don't like. And we are going to make earrings with them, only we're not going to use them this way. We are going to straighten out this perfectly good stainless steel wire. And we are going to embed this wire into 
our pod earrings. Yes, we are. Now, when you do this kind of thing, it's helpful. You guys probably have these to have a good flat nose plier like this. This is flat and blunt, so it's a little wider and it's quite easy to use and it's quite easy to remove a bend from wire and stainless wire is pretty hard. So yeah, it takes just a few seconds of work, but you know, I have so many of these. I don't have to buy any stainless wire. I just keep reusing them for other things. Yep, I do. All right. Making pin backs, that's, that's a good one. If you guys haven't seen that, take a look because after I did that class, I found out that I was not alone in not fancying this particular finding. And there were others who were like, yes, thank you so much, because now I don't have to throw them away. I can use them for something else. This one's ready to go. I'm going to do another one. Then we can start. Now there's just one last thing we have to do, and that is make a very tiny bend at the end of our wire. So these handy dandy pliers again, and then just bend like so and then pinch that closed. You know, these particular pliers do not have teeth and probably teeth for something like this would help. Best to have smooth when you're doing this kind of straightening. But when you're doing something like this, you probably want teeth because see, it keeps turning. Not a huge problem, but it does keep turning. So let us do the second one. Pinch, and you'll notice I'm not making this huge, big turn like so. Then let's just close it up a little bit because this end will be inserted in our clay. Okay, now I need to make a cylinder of scrap clay. So I'm gonna take my scrap and I'm going to roll it through my pasta machine, mix it all up, then I'm going to make a cylinder, then I am going to be back. No, I've rolled my cylinder. It's quite fine. See that? Because I don't want to make big earrings. I'd like to make these kind of petite and small and lightweight. Um, and, and here is the transferred foil on clay. And I removed it from the tile. And it is ready to be wrapped around this cylinder. All right, so the process is wrap, trim, roll, then close the ends. Take the clay from the sides and start drawing it up around to a point. Let me tell you what happens there. As you're drawing, you will notice that this pattern starts spreading out. And so the pattern, if there is like a pattern, like these stars and stuff, they start getting kind of spread out and you see more of the black clay underneath. The bigger the diameter of this, the more extreme that is. Okay, I think you can just imagine what's happening. The larger the diameter of this, the more this clay must stretch and stretch and stretch to cover the end. And that's why I'm starting with something so tiny because I do not want it to get all distorted and I don't want to see tons of black at the points. I'm still going to see some. It's unavoidable. But I will see less of it if I begin with a smaller diameter cylinder of scrap clay. So let's just wrap it, just secure it like so. And I'm not gonna use this whole thing, I don't think. Like so. 
transfer that front edge. You can see the front edge. I'm going to take my blade and just cut along there. This is left over. And now I will close the join. Like so. Yeah, the older I get, the smaller my earrings seem to be getting. In the 80s, I wore great big earrings to go with my great big hair. Okay, here we go. Yeah, for those of you who are kind of too young to have lived that, I think in terms of style and fashion, it wasn't really a great time. Dan skin leotards and platform everything. Okay. Yeah, I think you can be glad you weren't teetering on those platform shoes. Okay, excellent. Now, I'm going to cut these about an inch long, if I can find my ruler. Of course, in those days, I didn't have so much trouble keeping track of my stuff, I don't think. Yeah, so one inch, as I said, petite, little petite flower earrings. Actually, no flowers. Now, let us close the ends. So I just take my fingers and I lightly indent the ends and then I start the pulling of the clay from the sides around to cover. And yes, they have to stretch, but they're not having to stretch so very much to get the job done. And so I should see less of the black than I otherwise would. Hmm. Now here, just gonna try my best, just a little bit, but this is clearly the bad side. See the little seam? So when I embed the wire, I'm gonna make sure that that is in the back. <laughs> All right, getting her get her done. Now, I could make a, sort of a capsule shape. I could draw a point out of both ends and make it like a long tapering thing. I could make it like an acorn and blunt this a bit. And I think I like the acorn idea, so I'm just going to blunt it like this and make this end thicker and draw out the point. There we go. Tiny, so not a lot of that pattern is showing, but enough, I think. If I had made them very long like this and just tapered and tapered, then you, of course, it would have a much broader area of this holographic pattern, but I'm not gonna do that. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm going to take this little bend and the earring is like this. Right here is the earring curling back this way. So I want that line to be sort of in line with this curve. So like that. Doesn't have to go very deep in, just like that. Because now I'm going to seal it up Sounded like Julia Child there for a moment. See you little. 
with poly paste. Love this stuff. Okay, so it's going to go down into that hole. Like so. Push it in there. And now I'm going to do the other one just like the first one. Okay, so they are done, the two. So I'm going to pop these in the oven now. So the next element of our earrings are going to be just these little discs, right? This little floating discs above the... Uh, the little acorn beads. I'm going to make these gold. I like mixing metal colors a lot. Okay, so I'm just going to apply a coat of gold, let it dry, and then apply another coat, let it dry, and then I'm going to apply a third. Now, I use this Liquitex iridescent rich gold paint. I really like it. Uh, I like it because it's a little bit on the thicker side, but you know, whatever gold acrylic paint you have, it's going to do the same thing basically. might give you a more yellow gold or a brighter gold, but uh, basically just grab your gold paint and start dabbing on a thin sheet of black clay. Let's let that dry, and as I said, I'm going to let it dry, apply another coat, let it dry, apply another coat, let it dry. Okay, now the drying time tends to be very short. Maybe it's five minutes. Now, because it's dry to the touch doesn't mean it's dry all the way through. That's kind of important. It could take a week for acrylic paint to dry absolutely all the way through. And so that week... That week is the time that you can work with it with your clay. If you let this paint dry completely, totally on the clay, it doesn't stick anymore. <laughs> and uh, you just have to put that to the side uh, because and start again. There has to be just a little bit of tack, tackiness between this clay, this clay, and this paint in order for it to stick. Now, I do expedite the drying process by putting these in the oven. Once I do my three coats, I cut, I put it in the oven, the clay cures on the clay. And because it was tacky, when I put it in the oven, it sticks. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'll be back. All right, so I'm going to make these uh, discs, graduated discs. This one, five eighths of an inch, it is a Kemper cutter. That's the biggest one. This one is uh, a little less than a half an inch. These are those feral things. Okay. Um, and this was given to me by Carolina Soderberg. It's really a nice set she makes. Um, this is a little more than a quarter inch. And I'm gonna use this teeny tiny one to drill the holes or to pierce the holes. Okay, so this is dry to the touch. Almost, I'd say it's been about mm, four minutes, maybe. Maybe I should wait just a bit longer. Mm. I'm gonna wait just a bit longer you know, another minute or so, and I'm not gonna make you watch me again. Okay, I am going to cut one, hmm, two, three, in case something goes wrong. One, two, three, 
in case something goes wrong. Okay, what? Here's two. Here's three. Okay, maybe I'll do four in case nothing goes wrong and I have a second pair of earrings. Oh, I still have more room. Okay. All right. Why not? One, two, three, one. For good measure. Just because I have the clay. Okay, here we go. Come on. You can do it if you try. Yada yada. Okay, come on. Now, the edges look a little rough, don't they? I guess I'm going to have to sand them after they're cured. Not a big deal. Not a huge problem. Okay, so where's the little guy? Did I lose the little guy? Uh, maybe that's this one. It's trying to escape. Now I'm aiming for the center. I'm just going to do my very best. Hopefully, I'll be able to poke them out. And I think it helps to kind of turn it like, Adam, gunk, gunk, like that. Kind of make the hole a little bigger. All right. The idea here, of course, is that this is so much easier than drilling all these little teeny holes. Once again, not a huge issue. Certainly not beyond my capabilities. But it's kind of all, let's try to make things as easy as possible. All right, so here we have all of these little discs. They are ready to go in the oven, which is where they are going right now. So before putting them in the oven, I decided, well, maybe I should at least try to get these little cutouts out. Maybe uh, try. So acupuncture needle, the steadiest hand I can muster, jab the side of that cutout, Try to get it out. No, I can't get that one out as easily. I'm leaving it. I'll try to push it out later. But I'm not going to keep digging at it just in case because I might ruin the disc. And if there's any chance of that, I'm just going to wait and deal with it later when everything is cured. But doing the wobbly thing around the whole... Well, that helped. Come on, you see. Sometimes they're just like, I'm not coming out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm like, have it your way for now. All right, there we go. Now, oven. Did I just forget that one? There we go. Looks pretty good. Now these are cured. The first thing you want to do is you want to take a good yank and see if you can pull them out. Because they, they have to be secure in there. Now if you yank and you can pull them out, my advice, put some glue on. This Loctite Super Gel, gel Super Glue Ultra Gel Control on the wire. Poke it back in. Let it dry. This stuff is really great. Okay. 
So mine are firmly in the clay. So I have to quickly sand these guys. See, that's kind of raggedy. The edges are pretty raggedy. It's not the best looking, right? So I'm going to grab, I have grabbed my trusty Auburnet P180. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand the edges and this takes like two seconds. Maybe two seconds each. I don't know. The hardest ones to do are the little teeny ones because they're kind of hard to hold on to, but you know, it just doesn't even take that much. You're just trying to knock off the jagged clay. Okay, like that. Clay bits. Now the medium size, it's getting a little bit easier to do. You can lay your net on your work surface. You can take and just roll. I'm just rolling it along. Okay, boink. And boom, we are done. Big ones, same way, just keep rolling it and lightly sanding against the Abra net. And you'll have a nice smooth edge and knock off all those little ugly bits before, after. Mm -hmm. All right, so what you use, of course, is going to be your choice. This is what I'm using because I happen to have all these beads that I never, <laughs> I never use. I used to do a lot of beading. I used to have a business, beads and pearls and crystals and all that good stuff. Yeah, I did. I did. And uh, I must tell you that it's very hard for me to resist buying beads, even though I so rarely use them these days. Anyway, I have a bunch. One of the colors and one of the, one of the colors and one of the semi-precious things that I love the most is carnelian. Now I have these carnelian. These are actually glass. I'm not sure these are carnelian or glass, but it doesn't really matter. I just really like the color, but the holes are too small for these. So no, can't use them, can't use them. But, as luck would have it, I purchased these at a show. You know, they're glass donuts, but they are just this wonderful color that I love so much. So I took two out, smaller ones. I have some crystals. I used to work with crystals a lot. Yeah, I did. And I have some bead caps. These are really sweet. I like them a lot. Now, I need spacers. So, you know, your spacers could be beads. You know, just regular old beads. Let's say Japanese seed beads. Japanese seed beads would be a good choice because the holes are quite large. Okay. They would have no problem going over wire this diameter. But I am going to use these, which are just crimps that I happen to have. And um, so that's that. So first I'm going to take my bead cap put it on bead caps. Of course, you guys know it's just a nice finish. Covers the hole, looks nice, perfect. Now, let me take the smallest, thread it on, put a crimp, next one, and that little crimp will hold, separate the two pieces so they don't just flop down on each other. Crimp, big one, just like so, and you can see what's happening here. Ta -ta. Now, no crimp. I'm just gonna put this on, you know why? Because a crimp would just be sitting down there. It wouldn't make a bit of difference. All right, let's take another bead cap this time. It's, the petals are going up. Then I am going to put on a crystal. Now, a crystal, er, er, er. 
course, doesn't want to go and make that bend. And uh, so it's necessary for me to straighten it out a little bit. And it'll slide on. Now here, it's like, okay, done. Now, if it hadn't gone on, then I would have straightened the wire out more, of course, so that I could thread it on. Now, these are quite tiny. These are not the biggest crimps in the world. They're not the biggest crimps you're ever going to see, but I like them. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now, hello pliers. I'm going to take and I am going to smash that crumpy, er, smash it. Now, as I said, it is a little tiny. A larger crimp bead would hold better. But you know, this one is just gonna have to do. Somewhere in my studio, I'm sure I have larger ones, but I cannot quite locate them. This is, this one's very loose, so. I'm taking it off. I'm going to give it another try with another crimp because I made this other pair of earrings and they, the crimps did hold better than that last one. Seeing as how I have so many of these, I can just afford to sacrifice one if it's not working. Okay. Hello. There. Now it's not just flopping. Now it's not so easily sliding. Now, I think that I could just grab it and pull these off. I don't really want to do that. I mean, I don't intend to do that ever, ever, ever. But let's make it just a little more secure by adding just a little drop of this glue right there. My alarm's going off. Stop. Okay, there we go. And there is one earring. I think these are really cute. I like them. I would wear these earrings every day. All right, now I'm gonna take the wire and I'm going to bend it back and I'm gonna over bend it. See, over bending like that. And when I let it go, it will be up and down like so. Now, if I want to make this round and less sort of angular, then I can take round nose pliers, maybe something like, hello, I need bigger ones. Something like this. These are bigger. And then stick this down at the bottom, like so. And then bend against the pliers. And now I should have kind of a rounder earring wire like so okay so there is one and of course you're going to do your best to straighten it so it's not like and this shape ended up being sort of like a capsule with a little point on the bottom hmm. not exactly what i wanted i kind of wanted something that was more like and then a nice curve to a point but I didn't do that, obviously, because that's not what it looks like. Okay, so let me do the other one, and then we'll have a pair of earrings. So there you have it. I did the second one. Da, 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 da. And uh, you know what, you guys? Always, good idea. These, they're not expensive. You know, you won't lose your earrings. Seriously, okay. Ask me how I know. There is a graveyard littered, well, full of earrings I have lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know where they go, but poof, they're gone. Okay, so these were quite simple to make. Now, I want you to note this don't forget was this okay so when if you're going to look for these just search like nail art transfer foils or something like that and these should come up just remember the gold is not stable not stable like the other colors 
Okay, so this is the other pair. These are really cute. I'm, I will wear these. I will wear these. So anyway, simple. My little friend, Leslie Blackford, you guys might know Leslie. She is an artist who does the most wonderful animals and her work is kind of edgy and wonderful and sometimes very funny. But if she were to do this, there'd probably be a little dancing pig off the bottom or something. And, um, you know, I think that'd be pretty cute. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask her to do that for me. Leslie, please, could you send me two dancing pigs? About an inch and a half tall. Love that girl. She'd do it for me. All right. So that is it for this class. I hope you have enjoyed it. You know, make some earrings. You have friends, you have family, stocking stuffers, gifts for um, co-workers, whatever it might be. Even, you know, what you could sell them. They're just sweet. Okay. So enough of that. I am Donna Cato signing off. Bye.